Hey guys, Bad Science here. Ow, I got myself in the eye. Ow. Today I am back for day number 23 of r slash pro revenge. I think it's day 23. Yeah, it has to be day 23 at this point. Where today I only have two stories, but they sound... Like, one of them sounds absolutely batshit insane, to put it in the most simplest terms. <laughs> like, and yes, I know I just swore, but it, it is. <laughs> First off, we'll start with this story. He punched me over a fender bender. I destroyed his life. I was working as a civilian with the US military overseas, and I lived off base in an apartment complex popular among the US military. One morning, I accidentally hit another soldier's vehicle. Upon exiting the vehicle, I noticed that both our vehicles were what you call a hoop, what you could call a hoop tie. Uh, a hoop tie is an old car that is pretty beat up, that has been passed around from service to service member, and they generally sold for $1,000 to $2,000. I also recognized that I was at fault for the accident. It was a very minor accident. His rear bumper was dented in slightly, but I could hear both our cars still running. I approached the driver who had already gone out and he was in uniform and I apologized and said if it was all right with him, I'd like to negotiate a payment that I will pay him in cash and we don't involve the authorities. I wanted to keep this simple. I'll be honest, the accident was so minor, I honestly expected him to say, No nah, man, it's good. But even if he wanted some money, I have paid him. I have always been of the opinion, if you have a fender bender and can negotiate agreeable terms between both parties, it's best not to, to not involve insurance or police. He told me he wanted to call the police. I said we could call the police or we could go on base together and I could give him 300 bucks. He said that wasn't enough, so I upped my offer to $500. He proceeds to punch me in the face. It was a sucker punch. He got in his car and took off and in the process nearly ran me over. Now I had a black box in my car which recorded everything. I went to the uh, Provost Marshal, Marshal Office on base, the police station, and reported the incident and the assault and showed MP the footage which they used his license plate to track him down. I was also asked if I wanted to involve the local authorities and press, press criminal charges off base. Honestly, I felt like the soldier would learn his lesson if I let UMC, the military court basically, handle this and I said, not at this time. I, I was told it was an option. The end result was the soldier in question got 60 days of extra duty, reduction in rank, and forfeited a portion of his paycheck. Essentially, if he dealt with that, this would have have been the end of the whole ordeal. Honestly, at this point, I assumed a little ordeal was over. A f well, a few days after his punishment was decided on, which was not long after the incident itself, I was in the commission area, a grocery store on base, shopping when the soldier who assaulted me and who, who was... When the soldier who assaulted saw me and began to insult me. I told him he needed to clamp down that he should learn his lesson. And he told me I was a pussy who didn't know how to take a punch. I reminded him that I held back on destroying his life. He told me he's already being punished and I can't touch him again. He left me be. A store employee witnessed the entire encounter. And I got the employee's detail, detail and reported this interaction to his command. His commander told me he had been ordered to not interact with me and would take action. His commander also recommended me I involve the local authorities since this soldier obviously isn't learning his lesson. So I did. I contacted an attorney. The attorney was unsure if we could successfully, successfully sue the soldier and said he would need a cash payment to take the case. Honestly, I was mad and I wanted to teach this guy a lesson. I agreed it was not cheap. To keep, this, to keep this story short, we ended up in a court off base. We presented our evidence. The soldier in question had decided to represent himself. 
Several times in the court, he had outbursts. The judge ended up granting me a payment of approximately 50k US dollars. <laughs> when the judgment was given, the soldier called the judge a son of a bitch and that the army would cover for him. <coughs> so the judge changed his judgment to 80k and the judge then to- asked me if I also wanted to press charges against this officer in criminal court. Honestly, it was obvious this guy wasn't going to learn a lesson. I told the judge I wanted to pursue criminal charges in addition to the judgment. My lawyer later advised me that if I ever wanted to see the money, I should pursue an international hold. With my judgment, it's likely that a judge would grant me an international hold. An international hold is basically where the soldier would not be allowed to leave the country until I was paid my 80k. Also told me. Also, he told me that according to the agreement between the U.S. military and the host country, the U.S. military would honor the international hold. Basically, the U.S. military would not protect him or move him out of the country to avoid punishment. Honestly, by this point, I had my lawyer. I had paid my lawyer thousands of dollars, and I honestly didn't feel like paying thousands of dollars and get nothing for it. So I said yes, and I. I want to go forward with the international hold. A month later, the international hold was granted and the US military was informed of this. Two months after the criminal case was over and the soldier was sentenced to 90 days in jail, by this point, the soldier had been moved onto the base into his barracks by, the, by his commander. I remember the day I was informed the MPs handed him over to the local authorities to begin his 90 day jail sentence. Did I mention he still owed me 80k? I heard nothing for a year, and then one day I get a call from his commander. His commander wants me to make a statement in regards in reg- regards to the case. I go in and make the statement. During the statement, I find, find the US military was in the process of chaptering the soldier out of the US military. The commander also informed me that he was close to coming up with the money to pay me so he could have the international hold lifted. The commander also asked me if my lawyer would be willing to make a statement. I contacted my lawyer, who also made a statement about the facts of the case. I decided a few weeks later, his ex, a few weeks later, his ex-wife contacted me. When this all started, I knew he was married. I guess his wife decided to divorce him. She she informed that his ex, she informed that his ex-husband had the money and needed the details on how to pay me. I provided her the details and a few days later I got the payment and contacted the ex, his ex-wife to inform her I had been paid. She then sent me a receipt so he could have the international hold lifted and, and return to the States. I asked her how he got the money and said he maxed out his credit and also had, his fa- had family help out. Also during this conversation I had found out the army had chaptered him out of the military. I sent her the receipt that, and that was the last I ever heard from his side. TLDR, I got into a fender better with a soldier. I tried to resolve things with him. He punches me, gets UCMJ action, a civil judgment, nine days in jail, a divorce. I actually do not know if the divorce is connected I imagine this case didn't help his marriage, a ton of debt, and a loss of his career. I took his 80k and bought myself a brand new car and used the rest of the money to put down on an investment property. <laughs> and. Oh my gosh. Do I want to read this or not? No, I'm. I'll skip the uh, question and answer section and we'll move on to the second story for today. My parents and sister feared their only neighbor for five years. He sued or threatened to sue everyone he could. He made it personal for me when he put a gun to my dog's head to show his dominance. Around eight years ago, my parents and sister had moved out to the log cabin that we built as a family for six plus years. They lived on a secluded lake and bought 10 acres for themselves and to the north, 
another couple bought the five acre plot right next to us. We were the only two neighbours next to each other for 1.8 miles. At first, the couple was friendly and had no problems at all. After around six months of them living there and building their new home, my parents bought 144 acres to the north of them. This means that his property is sandwiched between our two properties. And since the only way we could get to our land is across his strip of land due to easement laws, he had no problem at first, but one day the trail we used to get to our land to the north was covered was covered that tra that trail was covered with large logs, branches, yellow tape and a no trespassing sign. My dad went to ask what was going on. The owner, we'll call him John, came up to my dad and demanded that we give him a twenty and I and demanded we give him a twenty yard wide and four hundred yard long piece of property to the north of him. He said he wanted to cut down some of the trees to the north of him to make sure no none of them fell on his house. This is a thickly wooded area. So of course my dad said no and that we wouldn't even sell this small portion of land that he requested to be given to him for free. We find out at the end of the story as to why he wanted this small strip of land so badly. This is where a five year shitstorm started. Before I mention all the bat, sh uh, bat short crazy things he had done to use over the years, I want to point out that he is a born fraud and took a settlement from the railroad company he worked for due to a back injury that would leave him disabled for life. Not true at all. We found out that he sues everyone that gets in his way because his oldest daughter is a lawyer and works the system. Here's a small list of the short that he pulled mainly towards my parents along with others. He had gone away with everything for five years because his daughter tells him how to stay in the clear. Also, he was on his fifth marriage, so not the most likeable guy. He slashed the tires of of our two four wheelers so we could so we could drive them to our land to the north on two occasions. Uh, he shot out and or slashed the tires of our vehicles when we were gone in, or in the middle of the night. We put up cameras, but they were not clear enough to prove it was him. Don't fu don't effing friend my dog's life. My golden retriever, Bailey, is outside most of the day, and John's dog is also called Bailey. The two dogs love to play together, but John did not like that. He said he would shoot my dog in the stomach if he ever went on his property again. After that, weeks later, he would start to yell at Bailey to lure our dog onto his property. He grabbed my dog by the collar and put a pistol to his head and said he'd kill my dog if he ever came on his property again or played with his dog. We put up an underground electric fence so she wouldn't go over there anymore, even though John would always try to lure her into his yard. <coughs> on several occasions, he would golf balls into our windows and blame it on me, since I was a golfer. Once again, everything he did, we could not prove in court. When his house was being built, we went through three different contractors because John was threatening to sue every contractor for every little thing and all three contractors left him. When he was getting his driveway poured, he offered to help the contractor and once again he was pulling another scam. Where I live, if someone starts helping a contractor with work, there is a weird law that states the contractor would need to pay John for his work he helped with. This went to court and he got his $10,000 $10, driveway for free plus took him another took him for another 15 grand for some other bullshit we too were in the process of finishing up my parents house and he stole very specific wood from a place to use in his house juniper diamond willow thick pine for window bucks a couple thousand dollars worth of wood once again we did not have enough evidence for a search warrant 
During Thanksgiving dinner several years ago, a house started on fire due to the stone mason cutting corners and using cheap slash wrong parts for a fireplace. Firefighters from five cities were dispatched because we live in the country. Do do the Due to the amount of fire trucks that were coming and going, John took his truck and parked it sideways on a strip of road that was tight so that the firefighters coming and going could not get through. He said we we were ruining their Thanksgiving to, due to the commotion of our house burning down and fire truck sirens. The next fire truck that showed up used the force, used the force within their rights to plow his truck off the road. John tried to sue us and the fire department for the damage to his truck, but it never even made it to court because the fire department had the rights to do so. Why listed above only scratched the surface. There is so much more short he did to my family that my that my mum and sister wanted to move because they were afraid of what he might do next. This is where all of the pieces started to fall in place and take him down. The spring after our house burnt down, there was a storm and Two trees from our property fell into, onto John's lawn, and he called demanding that we remove the trees. We had no equipment at this time, and at this time, told him we couldn't get to that immediately. So what John did was cut down a, a 20 to 40 yard area of trees to drag the trees to our property to the north of him. Later, he set that the pile of wood on fire and burnt down 20 or more trees and 20 acres of prairie grass. One of the trees that burnt down to the north was inhabited by a bald eagle. We could confirm the cutting down of 24 trees to drag the fallen trees that were in his yard, but couldn't prove the fire that was started to burn up those sword, sword up trees. When I saw that he had cut down a number of our trees on our property to the north of him, I took details, detailed photos of the all the cut down trees and mark the type of tree and how thick the trunks were. Turns out that in my state there is a monetary value to those trees and he was screwed. However, when I was marking the trees he cut down, I realised I didn't know where the true property line was. A few weeks later I found the prince to where the property line was and he built his house, a 5,000 5, square foot garage and underground propane tank a few feet into our property. So now we found out why he wanted that land so bad before we could figure it out. Now during this time John had put up his house for sale and put a $120,000 markup on what the actual market price was. We found out why he was doing this because he and a friend had gambled a lot of their savings on buying the property around the lake and they were selling no lots. He was bleeding money. He, we were finally able to put a lien on his house and that and that was his only lifeline to get cash to make their land payments. To make the rest of this story go by faster, I'll skip to the part where we ended up buying his house. We told him to put the house price back down to market value and then my father said that we could either sell the price of the trees out of court that he cut down of ours and he agreed back to the same unique w he agreed to sell that in the price of the house. My dad also identified the stolen wood and we could trace it back to the same unique wood in our house. We would sue him for that too or he could drop the price for stealing our materials. Lastly, because John was such an asshole, my dad used the leverage of the lien we had on his house to drop the value even more. John was bleeding money and was desperate for anything. So in the end, my parents bought, <laughs> bought his house for 28% of its market value. John's fourth wife would end up leaving him a year later. He filed for bankruptcy, bankruptcy, lost his land development area since he was upside down on the payments, and now lives in a cheap studio apartment alone. TLDR, never put a gun to my golden retriever's head. My parents feared for their safety, but could never find a legal way to prove what he did to my family. I was patient for years trying to find a legal way to make this asshole like, make an asshole like John lose almost everything in his life. <laughs> Update: Almost forgot obligatory pick of my doggo. <laughs> Let's check out the doggo, and we'll end the episode. Uh, oh yes.
Big ol' fluffy boy. <laughs> okay, with that, I'm gonna be ending this episode here. Links will be in the description to my main channel and also the second channel that you're on right now watching this exact video where there's currently a playlist and the last episode appearing on the screen for you to go check out. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when next video comes out. A ding, a ding. The Mad Scientist, Mad Scientist, out.